So for Vlogmas Day 2, which is today, I'm altering a shirt from start to finish in one day, if you didn't figure out from yesterday's hint. So here we go! Okay, so I'm actually filming this in the extra bathroom in my mom's house because I could not fit in the mirror in my house. But this is the before of the lovely shirt that I'm going to be altering for you guys today. Let me back up a little bit here so you get the full effect. I am so pretty! The shirt! is a 4x and I rather obviously hopefully obviously am not so I wanted you to see what it looks like before we get started and hopefully by the time I finish it will be a lot cuter so let's see how this goes so I am all set to start working on the shirt I've got it laid it out laid out on my floor and the first thing that I'm going to do is remove the sleeves which I'm going to do if you can kind of see there's a seam right there this is my assistant, Jasper. Um, all I'm going to do is take a seam ripper to the seams, or Jasper can do it for me. You want to do that with your claws? I'm just going to take the sleeves off, and oh, wow, I am maybe not. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to take these sleeves off with the seam ripper, and to do that, I need to turn this inside out. So all I'm going to do is go to the seam that's holding the sleeve on right here, and... Ah, uh, sorry, this is hard to film with my Blackberry. Okay, I'm not really going to be able to show you much of this because I can't hold it, but I'm just going to go through with my seam ripper and take this little row of seams out, and then after that, I will have to go back through and take that row out. I could just cut the sleeves off, but when I can do it via seam ripper, I prefer to. So that's what we're going to do to get started, and then maybe my cat will give me my shirt back. So Jasper, a mouse to play with. And he's much happier now that I've taken the shirt away from him. Are you happy, Bunny? Is that your mouse? Are you a fierce predator? Uh-oh. Where'd it go? Go and get it. I got your mouse. You can't have it. So we are back in my mom's bathroom, and I have now taken the sleeves off of this lovely shirt. Ooh, it's still a little large, as you can see. Um, the main reason that I got this is that I really like, whoa, this is new skill, filming in the mirror. I like the little neckline on here, which I'm just going to trace because I can't show you. And it reminded me of the kind of horseshoe shaped tops that have been really popular. So I think that what I'm going to do is kind of preserve that part as the straps. Um, I'm not really sure yet because this always kind of changes as I go along. But obviously the next thing that I need to do with this is make it a little bit smaller. So um, the kind of more professional thing to do would be to measure really carefully and pin it and be all exact. But I'm doing this in a day and I don't really care that much. So I'm pretty much just going to eyeball it on my sewing machine and take this in, you know, like a good seven or eight feet on each side. <laughs> okay, really, just like, well, I guess that's about a foot. All right, so I am now going to sew a seam along each side, that is hard to say, of this top to take it in. And the easiest way, if you're working with a shirt or a dress that's already, you know, put together that you're not making on your own, is to, this takes up my whole table, um, you lay it flat, and the seams that are already on the side, you're just going to basically follow that but in this case, I'm coming in, yes, I still have nails from my um, nail files the other day. I'm coming in about, I'd say, five inches here, and I'm just going to kind of follow that seam down the shirt. I don't think that I can sew <laughs> and video very well at the same time, but I'm going to try for at least a second here just to kind of show you. It's not rocket science at all. Um, I've got this on just a really basic straight stitch. This is what happens when you try to sew and vlog at the same time. So I'm basically just going to follow, I don't know if you can hear me over the sewing machine, but I'm going to follow the original line just in a little bit. And honestly, I don't put much at all effort into doing this perfectly, and my needle, okay, it didn't come unthreaded, cool. I don't put a lot of effort into doing this perfectly straight, because usually the first seam that I sew is never in far enough, I have to go back and do another one. Um, I sew it, and then I try it on, and then I sew it again, and it's kind of a process, but I really never put that much work into getting it perfect. 
because honestly, nobody really notices. <laughs> so I try to keep it fairly straight, but you know, I'm not a perfectionist about it. So I'm going to sew these seams real quick and then possibly go back and sew them a few more times and then I will show you where we are from there. This is now after sewing those first couple of seams along the side. As you can see, it's a lot more fitted now, but it's still way too big on me. Um, I don't know how well that shows up on the video here, but it's definitely a lot closer to where I need it to be. So the main thing I need to do right now is to kind of give it a shape. I want it to kind of nip in here at the waist. I obviously need a lot more room in the chest than I do in the waist. So I'm going to kind of create a curvy line here where it's just going to kind of dip in a little bit and then curve out a little bit more because, hey, I'm a girl and I have hips. Um, I'm going to go alter this a little bit. One thing I also have to do, pardon my yoga pants, um, when you sew those seams, you end up with a lot of extra fabric. I don't usually cut it off until I have the seams exactly where I want them, or else it gets kind of crazy. But this adds a lot of bulk if you don't go in here and cut all of that out. So we will do a little more sewing and see if we can get this looking like an actual shirt. Woo! The shape now. I took it in a little bit more. Um, give it kind of that curvier shape, and it's now quite a bit better fitted to my body. It's still not perfect. But, you know, perfection would take a lot longer than the amount of time I want to spend today. So now I'm kind of looking at it. For one thing, I tried unbuttoning. This is so hard in the mirror. I'm buttoning a couple of the little center buttons here to see if I like the sort of scoopy neck better than with it. This is the original neckline. I think I'm liking the little scoopiness better. So I'm just kind of trying that out to see if I like that better. If so, I'll sew it that way. Um, what I really need, due to the slightly weird shape of my body, i.e. I have boobs, um, I need something that kind of cuts in right here so that my waist doesn't look as giant as my chest. So I have a couple of options. The first thing that came to mind was to sew on a ribbon. And this is just a white ribbon that I grabbed. And so my first thought was to put a ribbon, kind of sew that at that kind of ampere waistline, and then have it where it could tie in the back to just kind of cinch that in, but I'm not really loving how that looks. So my second idea was to take some of this leftover fabric that I cut from when I sewed the sides, and I'm going to make some little strips out of this, I think. It's still, whoops, it's still sewn together. I'm horrible at filming. I am so sorry, you guys. So the plan I'm working with right now is to cut some strips out of this and attach them to the back like kind of the side back right about here so that that can kind of pull in and create that little dip in that would make this a lot more flattering. Better camera work could also make this more flattering. So I'm going to try that out and then show you how it turns out. I'm still a little undecided about the length on this because right now it's kind of a tunic length. My pants are like sticking out there. I don't have a giant stomach. I promise. Well, I do, but not that giant. Um, so it's kind of a tunic, hi Merida, tunic length right now. I don't know if I should shorten it. And yes, I'm just wearing yoga pants under this. That's my kitten. Um, so I don't know if I should shorten it to more of like a, eh, that doesn't look so good. I think I'm probably going to keep it like a tunic length because then I can wear it with leggings and blah, blah, blah. Um, this is left over from when I trimmed the excess fabric off the sides. And what I'm going to do is turn this into a little side tie to attach to the back of my shirt, and I'm trying to sew with one hand, which isn't easy. It's inside out, and it's just folded in half along the seam. Let me open it down here. So the right sides are together. It's just folded in half. Um, I'm just going to sew down the length of this to close it up so that I just have a little strip of fabric. So one second, let me sew, and then I will show you that. Okay, so now that I have those strips cut and sewn, they're kind of a little tube, which I just turned back right side out. And what I'm going to do is attach these to the back of the top. And wow, that's a lot of flowers. And this is kind of awkward to do because I'm not sewing them to the inside of the shirt. They're going to be actually attached to the outside. So I have this really awkwardly on my machine. But luckily, I only have to sew a couple of stitches here. And then those will tie in the back. So I will show you what that looks like once I get them finished. And it's finished now. It's not perfect. 
but I think it looks a lot cuter than what we started with. I don't think you can really see the back side ties that well, but it's done. Yay. So see you tomorrow, guys. Bye.